I want to go into some of the specific benefits of creator mode, and I'm going to share my screen so that you're going to get a better idea as to what these look like. First of all, you're going to notice that there is a normally on anyone's profile that does not have creator mode on, you will see a connect button. If you have creator mode on like Deb, I just recently interviewed her on my podcast and there's actually a live stream we did together right here on my YouTube channel. It is now follow. Now you may be wondering, what if I want to connect with Deb? You still can. You just got to go to more and then connect. You got to know to do that. But this big blue follow button is going to entice people to following without necessarily connecting. And that's how you build way more followers and connections because you can follow anyone you want. This person may not accept your connection request, but they can't reject your follow. And that's one of the mechanisms that LinkedIn uses to get people to get creators more followers. Now, when someone sends that connection request, they automatically follow you. I mentioned that. Even if you deny the request, if you archive that request that they sent to connect with you, they are still going to follow you, which is pretty cool. I talked about LinkedIn wants to give creators greater visibility for their content, but it should be in their niche. How does LinkedIn know your niche? It's really easy to see here. If I go to my profile, you will see here, and anyone who has creator mode turned on has these hashtags. Talks about blogging, LinkedIn, content marketing, influencer marketing, and social media marketing. So immediately when we are in someone's profile, we immediately know what they're about. LinkedIn knows what you're about. And you bet that if I send out content using these hashtags, LinkedIn is immediately going to associate that I'm probably an expert in one of those areas and immediately going to give me a little more visibility because you can only choose up to five hashtags, right? So it's similar to how with a website, you have a meta title, meta description for your homepage. There's only so many characters you can fill in. But if that includes influencer marketing and you blog a lot about influencer marketing, chances are you're going to get more authority on search engines for influencer marketing content versus content that may not be part of your meta title, meta description to a certain extent. So that's how that works. And if you were curious, uh, you go, it, it's really, really easy. I actually just changed my hashtags as you can see here, but it's really, really easy to say, you know what? I don't want to do social media marketing. I want to add another, uh, hashtag. And it's really interesting because it'll show you like what are the most popular hashtags. I'm going to go back to social media marketing, but that's how you are able to create these five hashtags. Really, really easy to do. All right. Number four is that you can add a custom website link. So you may not know this, but if we go further down in my profile, you're going to see this. If you click it, it's going to go to my website, right? NeilSchaefer.com. Well, that's pretty cool. All I need to do here is go to my edit. And at the very bottom, if you have creator mode turned on, you will be able to add a website. I could add a lead magnet. Hey, download my free book, sign up for my new course, buy my new book, whatever it is, you can add it there. And then boom, it's going to show up right here. I'd say that's another really, really huge benefit of the creator mode. So that is a really killer, killer functionality. Without even having to go further down in my profile, they're already gonna see what I'm about and they're able to immediately go to my website and follow me. I'm obviously editing my own profile, so you don't see the follow button there, but you would see it under normal circumstances. All right, another interesting little tweak is that you'll notice if you go down that I have the featured and activity sections above my about section. In a LinkedIn profile without creator mode, the about section would come first, and then you have your featured and activity. Now the featured is really critical because this is where you can put your lead magnets, the main things you wanna promote, up to three of these are gonna be visible at a time. You can add more and you can scroll through them. But this is a killer feature that says, hey, the minute someone goes below your profile, let's go back to Deb, let's see if she has it enabled. The minute someone goes down you know, in your profile, they're immediately gonna see these. So that's another really, really cool benefit of being in LinkedIn creator mode. Now, some of the other things you can do is you can do a LinkedIn live. And that's what I was going to hear. This is a previous LinkedIn live that I did. So you cannot do a LinkedIn live right now unless you're in creator mode. So the idea is that, and you also can't do a LinkedIn live from LinkedIn itself. You have to go through a third-party app. I'm a huge fan of StreamYard. And I started live streaming just to YouTube on StreamYard. It's like, why don't I do LinkedIn and Facebook as well? And actually, when you create a live stream in StreamYard and you connect LinkedIn 
and LinkedIn confirms you have creator mode on and you have the newsletter functionality, the LinkedIn live functionality on, it actually, once you schedule that LinkedIn live, it actually creates an event in LinkedIn. That event actually sends out a little post. And so people can like it. People can comment on it. And obviously, uh, I've had a number of people say, hey, Neo, I noticed you live in my feed today. So it does give you ability to get extra visibility. And if you're already doing live streaming, it makes sense to also publish that on LinkedIn as well. I find I get as much, if not more engagement on my live streams from LinkedIn than I do on YouTube or Facebook for that matter. So that is LinkedIn Live, another functionality just for LinkedIn Creator Mode users. The LinkedIn Newsletter. Now I have been publishing LinkedIn newsletters. You'll notice I have 11 editions. I just published one an hour ago. So I've been publishing these. Basically, I have a weekly newsletter I send out through ConvertKit. Why don't I just copy and paste that and put it onto my LinkedIn? And that's exactly what I have been doing. Now there's some tweaks I need to do, but if you subscribe to my newsletter, go to neilshafer.com and fill that out or follow my newsletter here, um, you'll see I have 6,109 subscribers. That's not bad. It takes a long time to build an email list of 6,109 subscribers. So you may start out with 100, 200, 500, 1,000, but it's another channel for your content. So you'll notice if you so my newsletter, it is basically the same content. I am copying and pasting. I'm tagging people within LinkedIn. And like I said, it's more visibility. LinkedIn is also sending this out as an email to those that are subscribed. And this is a really, really easy thing to do. They allow you to do that. They just add it as in your featured section. You can now add the newsletter. So immediately you want to get people subscribed to it and then boom, they can do it right from looking at your profile. Now you see where it says write article, right? you click on write article and you can also do LinkedIn newsletter from your company page, but company pages don't get much engagement on LinkedIn. So obviously I'm going to do this from my personal profile. You go next and then boom, this is where you cut and paste everything in. You want to upload a photo. This image becomes the header that you see here that also gives some visual appeal when it goes out into your feed. And then you basically write the newsletter. Now there's some things here. You can add an image, a video, slides, if you wanted to do that, links, code snippets. I haven't experimented with code snippets with adding my own podcast snippet, but I believe it's available to do, but it is really, really intuitive, really, really easy to do. Let me just add a title right here. This would be the subject line for my newsletter. So we add a title, we press next. And then this will publish as a newsletter. It'll go out of my feed. And then the email will go out to those people, I think by default, unless they have that feature or setting turned off. So that is how it is very, very easy to create a LinkedIn newsletter. I've seen some people just do a weekly blog post or a weekly video as a newsletter. So you don't have to have a formal weekly newsletter. You can use it as a way to give a weekly update, like a blog post or a video or a podcast episode. We also have LinkedIn audio event. Now this is not something that I take advantage of, but let me just go back here. And this is where I'm able to access all the creator tools I have. And you'll see that there's this audio event. Now the audio event is something I haven't done. They started this, launched it when Clubhouse was a big thing. I don't know how many people do it, but it is possible to do an audio event if you are a LinkedIn user. So if you're big on Clubhouse, you might want to check that out. All right, there's also some creator analytics that LinkedIn gives you. So the analytics you see about your posts are more on par with what a LinkedIn company page analytics would be. So that's pretty cool. You get additional insight. You also get a follow button, which you could put on your website if you wanted to, just like those old follow me on Twitter buttons. I don't do that, but hey, you could do that. And you become more discoverable in search results. So this is an example. I just did a search for myself. It's pretty cool when I do a search for Neil that Neil Patel comes up, but you'll see that his hashtags come up and you'll see that his follower count comes up compared to two people. Neil's actually a good friend. I'm following this other Neil as well. You can see how much more visibility you get. You get those hashtags. So you know whether this person is relevant to you or not. And you see the social proof, the credibility that comes with having all those followers. So that's a pretty cool functionality. I would say about the creator mode and being discoverable in search results. And I will say that LinkedIn has promised, and I'm going to quote them. You become eligible as a creator in creator mode. You become eligible to be featured as a suggested creator to follow so that potential followers can find you and your content across LinkedIn. 